Welcome to the third part of my uh, course, guys. Um, now, the third part was originally supposed to be about particles and possessives, but I'm going to move this on to part four, because one very important uh, comment appeared on Facebook where, where my uh, video was posted, and it was um, uh, any resources that could help Obviously, online resources are not only online resources. Now, in terms of online resources, uh, well, I can tell you what I use personally. The resource that I use uh, all of the time, all of the time, basically, it's called Jabra. I will link it in, uh, in the description of the video. It is a uh, university project, I believe, to create a dictionary. Uh, this is especially useful, uh, which you will notice in the future, for verb conjugation. Uh, unfortunately, the dictionary of Jabra itself is not that uh, impressive, so a lot of things are not there, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's the best you can do. And uh, some of you might have found an online dictionary, Maltese English dictionary. It is actually Jabra. It is just a different interface, but it is taking the, uh, the data from a Jabra corpus, and I am not sure whether it has the newest corpus. So I, I always go to Jabra, especially since it also has a certain technical uh, searching capabilities, which will be useful in the future, especially when we start to conjugate verbs, as I noticed. Now, Jabra is not perfect. Jabra has mistakes. Uh, which are not really due to uh, human error, but the fact that it conjugates verbs uh, automatically. It creates all the forms automatically on the basis of rules, and some of uh, uh, exceptions uh, were not spotted by the creators and were not manually corrected. Therefore, trust it 90%, don't trust it 100%. I also, yes, I also use Google Translate, which again, it's uh, far from perfect. Uh, it makes a lot of mistakes, but I use it mostly to understand things that I, uh, that I cannot find anywhere else, right? Or, well, I could obviously try to find them offline, but if I'm only online at the moment and I want to lose it, and I, was, and I want to use uh, online resources, I use Google Translate. I do not use it to translate into Maltese, it makes a lot of errors, but single words, it might help you. So do not uh, disregard Google Translate completely, but use it very carefully. And these are basically the only two online resources that I use regularly. There is Lingui, which is interesting because it, uh, it, it's a context-based uh, translation. I will also link it in the description, don't worry. Um, meaning it has um, Maltese and an English text. For example, I don't know, some uh, law articles or something like this. It's usually based on European materials and stuff like that. So it basically shows you the same uh, word appearing in an English document and in a Maltese document, which also can help. It is actually great. It is a Lingui is a resource that I used to uh, used to use when I was working as a translator professionally. But the problem here is again the corpus. It has very few documents. It just has official documents, so it won't have the typical everyday stuff. So basically, you're kind of stuck. You just have to pick it up uh, from posts on Facebook. Oh, please don't do that. Well, I mean, you can try to understand them, though, but please realize that a lot of Maltese people have problems with writing correct Maltese. And it's not really their fault. Remember the, the, the way that the language was uh, um, conveyed between people in the past because this was an English colony after all, it was not official. The official uh, uh, courses and official schools in Maltese and everything, this is kind of like still fresh, it's just like 50 years or so, right? Um, but the language was al al always learned by speaking. And f some of the writing rules are still like changing and solidifying right now. So 
so please be be uh, aware of this and be aware that a lot of Maltese people do not um, install uh, uh, Maltese keyboards therefore they write without the tikka, without the dot above um, a friend of mine uh, suggested what the correct name for this is um, or without the bar across H and stuff like this so basically you have to be very careful about this um, now for books which I can recommend there is a series of books the green books it's like th that's the Bible for foreigners uh, for learning Maltese I'll try to link uh, the name of it because I don't have those books right now I actually lent them to a friend who's also learning Maltese who, and uh, she's not as advanced as me uh, these are three books one is about like uh, common words in Maltese one is more about grammar one is about practical uh, aspects it's a good resource but honestly mm, I didn't use it much. Uh, I used mostly materials from my course. However, however, there are three books which I can recommend and these are first of all the dictionary. This was recommended to me by my teacher. I think there are a lot of good dictionaries but this one I can personally recommend. I'm using it. So this is the one right by Joseph Aquilina. There is also a major copy I think of several tomes, big tomes of this, very expensive, but this is the concise version. And so I decided to go for the concise versions first. Maybe in the future I'll get the big one. And the books which I love the most, however, I'm a bit of a grammar freak, okay? You might not be, but if you are, if you want to go deep into, into grammar and orthography, there are two books. <laughs> this is one of them. This is the one about orthography. It's uh, smaller. You can get it online. I bought those online. And the second one, this one is about grammar and uh, this is the one that I would say is more important. If you can afford just one of them, start with the red one. But both of them complement one, uh, one another, so uh, I recommend getting both of them. And that's basically it when it comes to resources. Um, a lot of people have asked me how I managed to actually learn the language in writing. Okay, I don't speak that well, but in writing I'm quite good. How did I do this? Uh, well, first of all, uh, practicing. Once you get the gist of it, I started uh, simply writing Facebook posts. I started writing comments in Maltese on are you being served or this a lot or somewhere else. Making mistakes, sure, of course, but still, it's better than nothing, okay? Um, so, regular practice by writing, and uh, I created the Memorize course, which I keep uh, mentioning, but the important thing is, um, I not only created it, but I actually practiced after creating it, because I created it from books from a book which was uh, delivered to me by my, um, which is not for sale because it was by like a, a photocopied book um, created by uh, my teacher uh, for lifelong learning courses. So I cannot recommend this book, unfortunately, it is just, you know, from the course. Um, but then I started practicing and I started uh, doing it every day. The important thing is just repeating every day. Those things at the beginning, they, uh, especially when you're older like me, I'm nearly 50. Um, it is a bit harder to remember new things, but if you keep repeating every day, every day, just a little bit even, you will be surprised how, uh, how much stuff actually sticks in your head with time. So, repeat, memorize, as soon as you can start writing even the simplest sentences, um, participate, just, you know, get into it, feel it, and uh, that will uh, help you more, I think, than any, than any um, good book or anything like this. Obviously, this is me. You might have a mm, different preference when it comes to learning, but this is what I personally found to be very useful, and this is what I can recommend to you. Thank you very much, and uh, in the next part, I'll be back talking about grammar. Thanks.